Today we're going to be removing a wheel stud and replacing it for the 2011 Lexus IS350 and the one we need to replace is on the front left wheel hub. So in order to replace the wheel stud for the IS350 or majority of cars what you want to do first is jack up the side that you're working on. In my case I'm working on the front left wheel and one of the studs has broken. So what you need to do here is jack up the car safely from the reinforced jacking point. Now you can just use the jack that came with the car or go ahead and get yourself a good floor jack and jack it from that point as well. But ensure that you do use the reinforced point. So if you have a look at underneath the car you're going to see these two points here where you're supposed to put your jack. Now your standard jack that comes with the car sits perfectly in between these two notches right here. So that's where you want to jack it from. Now I've used a floor jack here and I've slightly creased it one side but that's okay as long as you don't do any damage or cause too much damage. So make sure you do put it in between the two notches because that is your reinforced point. Once you have the car jacked up all you really have to do now is remove the five wheel nuts off the car and then remove your wheel. Now I'm not going to show you all that because it is very simple how it's done. I have shown how it's done in a previous video so be sure to check that out if you just want to see how you go about removing the wheel off the car but it is pretty straightforward. And then once you do that we can continue to the next step. Here I've gone ahead and jacked up the car from the reinforced point and next I'll just remove the wheel. To remove the wheel it's best to use a breaker bar like this but if you don't have one you can always use a longer bar on the end of a ratchet. Then once the wheel is off, this is what you will be greeted with and we go to the next step. All right, so now you're going to break this one loose and then the one right below it. Go down, righty tidy, lefty loosey. All right, there we go, it's off. Now that we've broken it loose, we can just undo it by hand with the socket, of course. Okay, that's one bolt out. Let's undo this one. Once you have it loose enough, you should be able to just undo it by hand. Okay, get ready to catch the caliper once you've loosened it. You need to pry the caliper apart. Okay, so now that we have those bolts out, we need to spread the brakes apart. So here's my little tool here. I'm just going to push against the brake pads so that they pry apart a bit and then the caliper will come off just like that we're gonna sit this for a second while I go and get a S hook All right so here's the S hook I'm talking about all we're going to do is hook it in the caliper hole like so just to get it out of the way for now and hook it straight onto the springs just like that so we don't drop the caliper and rip the um, hydraulic hose. Once the caliper's off, what you're going to need now is an M8 bolt. Depending on the size of the head of your bolt, get one that will fit. And then what you want to do now is screw it in until it pushes the disc brake out. Once that comes out, we are then free to smack out the stud. Here I'm just starting it off with a ratchet first. Now, of course, you can go ahead and use like an impact gun for this, but just go real slow. You don't want to break anything. I'm just going to hold it in place and I'm going to go slow. There we go. And see how that just came right off? Nice and easy. Look at that. Perfect. All right, so now with the disc off, you can see how easy it is now to remove the wheel stud. You've got plenty of room at the back here. All we need now is a hammer and we're just going to smack that right out. We have a little mash hammer and all I'm going to do is smack it straight out. So now we have successfully removed the broken stud. We can put on our new one. Do ensure that you do have the right wheel studs as well. Same length and all. Here it is right here. Now you want to turn it so that you do have space to put it in. Okay. And there we go. It is the same size because when you look at it from the side here, you can see that it does stick out a little bit more than this and that is just enough for it to sit flush to here and then be the same length. Let's just check and make sure that the wheel lugs do fit as well. Yes they do, perfect. We can use this tool here which will allow us to sit it over the top and use 
our wheel nut to fasten it and pull it in nice and tight. Let's grab our 21 mil, sit it on there and use an impact gun to bring it nice and close so it's flush. Now don't go for gold here, make sure you just go nice and slow until you see it flush at the back here. Here we go, we're going to drill it in now so that it's nice and flush to the back. It's almost flush, it still needs a little bit more. It's not completely flush just yet. Let's have a look. Okay, so there's still a small little gap there. So we need to go in just a little bit more. And that's it. Now you undo the nut. Look at that, wheel stud completely replaced, ready to go. Now, I did break this the last time I was working on this car, so that's why I had to replace it. Learn from my mistake, guys. Do not fasten your wheel nuts until the wheel is completely flush, or else you will break it like I did. With that done, we're gonna put some anti-seize on the back here, because we don't want this to be, get stuck to it the next time we want to remove it. The reason why that came off so easily is because somebody already put anti-seize on there, so that's very important as well, so make sure you do that. This is the Permatex copper anti-seize lubricant give it a nice stir simply apply some on the surface of where it makes contact right here see where I'm spreading it right now that's where you want to apply it all over okay okay now we just line up the bolt holes once again like that and we can also remove the bolts from here First, we need to put our brake calipers and put them straight back on now. Release it off here. There we go. Just like that. We'll get our bolt and we will line it up at the back and sit one bolt in so it holds it in place. Okay, so I've just started off one bolt just now. It's going in nice and easy because it's uh, nicely aligned. Now we'll get the bottom one on. I'm just gonna reach around and do this. There's the top one on just there. Now we've got to get this bottom one on. Just going to feel for the hole right there. Get it in and we'll start to screw that in. It's in now, so that's good. Once the wheel goes back on, it's going to hold this completely flush. Now let's grab our 17 mil and let's fasten up these two bolts. So the same spots where you saw me take out these two 17 mil bolts, we're just fastening them back on now. And also be very careful when you're doing this. Don't accidentally thread it. And you'll see when you tighten this up all the way, it's going to hold the caliper in place and the disc is going to stay flush once you put the wheel on anyway. Let's get it nice and snug on. All right, here we go, nicely snug. There we go, that's snug now. And then I'm just going to give it a nice quarter tap turn. And that's it, that's all you need. And for the bottom one, we'll do the same. There we are. And then we'll give it a quarter turn. Tapping it. So from when it got snug, I just gave it another quarter tap. So a quarter turn, but tapping it because it's easier when you tap it with your hand. All right, now as you can see here, the wheel is still a bit loose because it's, there's nothing holding it in place just yet. But once we put the wheel on, it will hold it straight, okay? And the brake calipers aren't completely straight just yet, so that's probably why it's rubbing. But we'll test that out in just a second. Just gonna put the wheel back on and then we'll pump the brakes and uh, we're pretty much done. That's how you replace the wheel stud on your Lexus IS350 from 2011 to 2018, I believe. Really not that hard at all. So now we'll put back the wheel on and um, give it a test run, make sure there's no squeaks and everything runs as it should. Now remember, like I said before, when you go to put your wheel back on, make sure it is completely flush. Don't make the same mistake I did, learn from my mistakes. So let's line this wheel up. There we go. Make sure it's nicely flush. All right, now let's get our wheel nuts on.
try to go directly across from each other, kind of like a star pattern. That way you know you're getting your wheel in flush to the hub. It's always a good idea to do it by hand first, that way you know you're not threading it. And now that we've got it basically all the way on, let's just give it a snug up before we lower the wheel. We just snug it up. Star pattern guys, remember? So basically what you want to do is go in one and then skip one until you do it five times. All right, so you skip one. Okay, and you skip one again, and this will be the last one. There we go. That's all snuck up now. Now that I've put the wheel on and it's made it all flush, when I spin it, notice how you don't hear any grinding of the disc brakes? because it is now completely center. And it is as true as it can be before I remove the wheel. So now all we have to do is pump the brakes and uh, we're good. Whenever you go to remove your brake pads, you always push against your hydraulic piston. And what you need to do now is pump on your brakes so that you pump the hydraulic brakes back into position. Once it gets stiff, you know that you are there. That's it, that's all you gotta do. And after all these tools, which you probably wouldn't need, finally we have replaced the wheel stud of the Lexus IS350 2011 model. That brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.